So good, good afternoon, everybody, or good morning, depending on which state you're in. Um, I'll just give a few more moments to uh, let people join. There's still a high number of people joining at the moment. Just a few um, details. Um, there's a chat window. So if you've got a question along the way, pop it in the chat. Um, if we get to the end and um, there's time, I'll take more questions. If there's not time, then we'll respond. I'll respond to anybody who asks a question. Um, if at the end of the, the discussion today, you want more information on anything, feel free to contact either our support line or come to me. And um, ANSYS are running a lot of detailed webinars too that you can tap into. Usually they're not of a great timing for us here in Australia, but you can register and then you're opened up to get the uh, recording sent to you. So um, I think um, in the interest of time, we might make a start. So um, well, welcome to 2022 R1. I hope lots of you have got it installed already and are enjoying its, its features. Um, We'll, um, we'll go through it in groups of subjects, so let's get going. So one of the big things recently with ANSYS Fluent has been on usability. Um, many of these things I'm just going to flick through, but it's really important, I think, to let you know certain things are happening or have been done. So one of the things you'll notice is it's going to be much, much faster for larger cases. So the GUI can slow down to a slug, or used to, when um, you had lots of cells, lots of faces, lots of solids present. There's been some massive reductions um, in time required to do things and set things up. There's a couple of changes to um, the embedding of Windows. So you're able to um, embed a window inside another one now. So for example, you could have a, an image of the um, pressure field showing up as you solve and it's showing that. Well, you could, for example, embed a, a graph of residuals. And the way that that embedded information is kept in that is now um, improved. There's a, a small change, but one that lots of people have asked for, is that a lot of people want to make an animation, say, during a steady state run, just to see how the flow is going and make sure that they've got everything set up right. So you can now make those animations live to the screen and just have a storage type of none. And um, it'll just disappear when you're finished. There's been work to improve um, your ability to have multiple views. So when you set up multiple views in Fluent, you can now synchronize them. There's a short movie here that I'll play. So you can go down, click on the lock button, and once you've locked that, now all these views are locked together. So, um, and you can synchronize all windows or some windows. Uh, so it makes it much easier for um, exploring certain regions of the model. Um, this is something for people who like to make nice plots. So um, when you want to, for example, render um, the walls with some sort of material, so you might want to make them look made of concrete or steel, um, you can now have more materials and more control over that. It's very intuitive to use. So you can go in there and pick uh, groups of walls and render them or individual ones. Uh, it's very flexible. A couple of new supports for functions. So two, two big ones. So a key one is that now whenever you use an expression, previously you could only take, say, the average static temperature on, on a surface. Now any object you've created, be it a plane, an isosurface, um, whatever, an isoclip, can be used for this information. So it's much easier now to go around and, and extract data. And secondly, um, you can now 
create um, forest monitors on porous regions. So if you need to get forces uh, acting on a porous region, such as a radiator or a porous block, you can now do that. A few um, uh, ease of use things. So, so one is if you want to find out about your mesh, uh, you can now select a whole pile of, of uh, regions, volumes, cells, and get info on the quality. And then secondly, it's always it's been possible for a long time to make a nice pulse video, but you would have to do some sort of screen recording to capture that. Now there's a save pulse animation built into this. So you can actually write a, a video file directly. Um, there are quite a few additional modules to Fluent that um, you might want to use. Um, they're not part of Fluent because they have a kind of a specialized user base, um, but um, things like MHD or fuel cells or um, the fiber model, macroscopic particles, reduced order models, etc., uh, can now be addressed through the more option here when you're in the toolbar. So you don't have to go into the TUI and load them up. That, that has a, a certain advantage that depending on what type of models you've got enabled, more or, or less of these will be available. So it'll stop you um, having incompatible things set up. Anything that you were doing in the TUI, to, in your scripts, that will still continue to work. 